today's program, The Koreans of Kazakhstan, Almaty's Korean Theater, Food and Fun in a Korean Village. Salam, Privyat, and hello. I'm Dennis Keen, and today on Discovering Kazakhstan, we will be discovering the world of Kazakhstan's Koreans. Kazakhstan is one of the most diverse countries in the world, with more than 100 ethnic groups, and some of them are quite unexpected. After all, we are quite far from the Koreans' ancestral motherland, but over generations, the Koreans have made Kazakhstan home while maintaining their unique traditions. Come along as we explore this fascinating community of Koreans in Kazakhstan. Koreans first arrived to Kazakhstan in the 1920s as rice specialists, but they arrived en masse in 1937 when Stalin exiled them to Central Asia from the far east of Russia, fearing that they couldn't be trusted to be loyal to Soviet power. Despite their tragic history of displacement, the Koryo Saram, as Kazakhstan's Koreans call themselves, have been remarkably resilient, preserving their culture, food, and language through the decades. We first met up with the local Koryo Saram in the city of Almaty, where more Koreans can be found than anywhere else in Kazakhstan. The plaster bar relief ornament over the entrance of this beautiful Stalinist building on Bogan by Batur Street in Almaty shows a violin and the Kazakh instrument Dombra. But nowadays, inside these walls, you're more likely to hear Korean drums or see a Korean ballet. For this is the new home of Almaty's Korean theater. The theater has long been the center of the Korean community in Kazakhstan. And so it is here that we will dive into the art and culture of the Koryo Saram community. We were greeted at the theater by one of its most famous personalities, the theatrical director Oleg Lee. At the theater's small museum, he told us about the fascinating history of this theater. Well, the theater was organized in 1932 in Vladivostok. И он является старейшим в мире профессиональным национальным театром. The theatre was founded in 1932 in Vladivostok and it is the oldest professional national theatre in the world. Even in Korea, it was founded in 1950 and Kim Ten, who received the title People's Artist of the Kazakh SSR, participated in the opening ceremony. The repertoire includes theatrical performances, musical theatre, plays, dramas, everything from Shakespeare to Lorca to national theatre. Our audience is diverse, with Koreans, Russians, Kazakhs and Germans. В этом отношении зритель у нас не только кореец, но зрители у нас и русские, и казахи, и немцы. Как они нас понимают? We have simultaneous translations. We perform in Korean, but there's a simultaneous translation into Russian. Everyone in the audience understands Russian. В общем, все понимают. We tour not just in Kazakhstan, not only in the CIS, but also abroad in Korea, Germany and even England. Everywhere, of course, we get rave reviews from the audience, and for our actors, that's priceless. Come on, come on, come on. 
Oneg took me to the main stage to sit in on some rehearsals for a play he's working on about Hon Bom Do, a general who launched the Korean Liberation Movement against Japanese invaders before being deported in 1937 to Kazakhstan. This national hero ended up in Kizrorda, where the Korean theater was at that time, working there as a humble watchman. The playwrights and actors who worked with him dedicated a play in his honor way back in 1942. <laughs> 저는 전 모두 가지고 있던 마음을 변치 않습니다. 목숨을 걸고 나선 사람입니다. 대장님. A big bravo to the Samonori Ensemble here. Did that get your heart beating fast or what? I mean, such speed, such precision, such coordination, especially watching these two drummers here in the middle uh, play in total synchrony as if they're puppets being pulled by the same strings. Then over here, you guys have playing the cymbals uh, in counterpoint. It's a thrilling musical act to watch. I've never seen anything like it. More shocking is that there is a village a few hours away called Ushtobe with just around 25,000 souls and it's a major center of Korean culture for this is where an especially large amount of Koreans were sent during the 1937 deportation. Generations later, they are still proudly showing off their traditions and we drove up from Almaty to get a taste. We've come to a center of Korean culture uh, in the village of Ushtube to meet a very special group, a group of elders called Uri Noyin that is headed by Yuri Petrovich Pak. Hello. This is our community group. Women from our group have prepared some dances and songs for you. This group is already 18 years old. 
Not very old and not very young, but our future is promising. Please enjoy our songs and dances. Wearing brightly colored hanboks, the Korean traditional dress, our dazzling dancers performed buche chum, a form of Korean dance incorporating beautiful colored fans. We were invited to Ushtabe and treated to these beautiful songs and dances by a United Methodist Church here that is actually the center of the Korean community. And you can imagine how surprised I was when we arrived at the Methodist Church and I met Pastor Howard, who is actually um, from Los Angeles, just like me, not too, not too far away from where I grew up. But Howard has been coming here um, for several years now to, to help build this church here. And Howard, I have to imagine how strange it was the first time you came to Kazakhstan. How did you feel? When I was the first time that uh, I looked for the uh, almost the same face. Yeah. But we don't have any communication because we don't, we're using different language. And a couple of days I learned a little bit and we we, we had they, each other, yeah. right? They understand. So that's why I like these people and my, you know, own brother and sister. I was surprised when I had Korean food for the first time because we have a dish like this, which is actually a kind of seaweed, um, which obviously very popular in Korea, right? But um, you don't have seaweed growing in Kazakhstan, right? We're in a landlocked country. There aren't any seas. So as far as I know, they bring this from from Korea or from China. But then there's also some food, like, do you have this kind of dish in uh, in Korea? No. Or in California? Yeah. No, nothing. No. <laughs> so, how did you feel the first time they gave this to you and they said, this is our Korean salad? Yeah, but this one, I first time here, they have a uh, potato. Yeah. Another one is a carrot. Yeah. Right there, yeah. classic Korean carrot salad. How could they make it? Those kind of food. When I taste, it's not better. Yeah. Better than any other food. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you need to bring it back to California. Yeah, so yeah. I, I try to do it. Oh, okay. Because I learn how to make it. Yeah. So when I go to America, then I make it. Then I share with everybody. Yeah. It's really interesting to compare because I think most people in the world, when they think of Koreans, they think of Koreans in South Korea um, or North Korea on the Korean Peninsula. But the fact that we're here in Ushtube in Kazakhstan, eating Kazakh food, sitting with such a lovely Korean community, with the gentleman Howard from the Korean community in Los Angeles, you guys are all over the world. Yeah? And I think wherever you go, you can find Koreans. And wherever you go, you find the same kindness and hospitality and love uh, for their traditions. So I think I really respect you guys for that. Thank you so much. Ushtobe in the Kazakh language means three hills, named after three big hills near the village. And Venera, one of our hosts, took us out to one of them, Bostobe, from where we got a stunning view over the valley of the river Karatol. When Koreans were settled, they transformed this whole area into a major source of rice in Kazakhstan. Now, things were different. So if we stood here 50 years ago, would this have looked any differently? 50 years ago? How old was I then? 23 years old. Everything was different then. In what way? There was rice growing in the fields, now there is only grass. So all around here there was rice. Life was in full swing here. Twenty years ago life was in full swing here. Then there was the collapse and there was perestroika. Before perestroika, of course, life was in full swing. We felt then that we were going somewhere. There was a factory here with 2,000 workers. We had the first yurt factory in Kazakhstan. 
У нас Интересно, What I like about this place is that all different kinds of people lived here, from Cossacks to Russians and Koreans, and everybody lived peacefully. You know, Howard lives here with us and he says that there are no real national divides in Kazakhstan. He had been to a lot of places and Kazakhstan really is a special place. At the base of Bostobe is a special monument known to all Ushtobe Koreans, and Venera took me there to have a look. We are standing near a monument. When the Koreans were resettled in Kazakhstan, the Kazakhs took them in and helped them a lot. And this monument was erected in gratitude to the Kazakh people. You know, at the beginning they wanted to put a monument at the train station or in the square. Then they decided to put it here, because from this mountain you can see our entire region. Yeah. And it also says here that here there was a dugout, so Koreans lived here. Here there are some remains of old dugouts. This is all in gratitude to the Kazakh people. And they built a yurt here, like our common home. Kazakhs and Koreans living peacefully together. And here there's this interesting stone. Something is written here in Korean. The inscription from Korean was also translated into Russian. But I like that here you can see it in three languages actually. We have one that's in Korean. Here in the middle it says Kazakh Hokana Mung Algas in Kazakh. Over here we have it in, in Russian. And everything is under this one common yurt. And I think it reflects the kind of beautiful reality of Kazakhstan, which is that it's pretty harmonious, is that we have uh, these three ethnic groups that were living mostly in this region and lived in peace. And I can see why Koreans actually were quite grateful uh, to Kazakh people for taking them in. Because when Koreans first came here, there wasn't even anything around, right? When Koreans moved here, there was nothing. That's why the Koreans were brought here. And remember, in the Far East, they also settled near the mountains. And you said that here you can actually find some remainders of those dugouts. These are some remains of the dugout in which the Koreans spent the winter, because they arrived in 1937 here in the late autumn. They wintered here and then it went further. Yeah, let's go have a look what's left over there. It's, it's hard for me to imagine how people lived under the ground. They dug a hole and there was something like a staircase. They made a stove that's called an ondol in Korean. It's a stove that they hid it and the chimney from the stove was on the ground, under the floor. The system kept them warm and then they covered the top with reeds so that it was something like a roof. Just with reeds. They covered the top with soil, and then when it rained, the earth would crumble. They would lay and see the open spot, but it was dark inside. Though it is a little romantic to lay back and watch the sky. That's how they lived in the steppe. As Venera mentioned, there was a village nearby, Yeskelde, that old-timers still call Dolny Vostok, or the Far East, in nostalgic memory of their long-ago home. There it's said that Koreans know their traditions especially well, so we headed over and were invited into a family home. The first thing that caught my eye was just how huge the yard was, with every kind of vegetable imaginable, corn, carrots, cabbage, napa cabbage, bell peppers, chili peppers. Koreans are known for being hardy farmers, and here was the proof. Well, 
What's from so yes? You have everything here you could ever need for the kitchen. I bet you guys don't even go to the supermarket. In the summer, you don't have to go anywhere and you can save your money. <laughs> I have to say that's something that we could probably learn from the Koreans is that, you know, living in this kind of consumerist society in, in California, we go to the supermarket for everything. I've never even had my own garden. But the fact that they have here, they have every kind of food they could ever want. I mean, that is really a mark of sustainability, of, I think, eco-friendliness. So big thumbs up to the Korean people for having these kind of beautiful gardens here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so interesting. What is this exactly? This is soy. We make soy bean past and soy sauce from it. I can't even imagine how this becomes sauce. They take soybeans, then boil them, pass them through a meat grinder. It turns out like clay, such a homogeneous mass, and they make parties out of it. Then it dries, but inside it stays little damp. It ferments inside, some kind of fermentation, and the most unique thing is inside, like penicillin. Mm. It's like medicine. <laughs> Грибки пенициллина. Потом этот ложат как бы в воду, погружают... Then penicillin fungus grows. We put this patty in salt water and it swells. The black mass sediments inside and this black juice is extracted from this patty and then this juice is boiled for a long time. It creates a high concentration and soy sauce turns out. Сок, да, извлекает и кипятят долго. Этот кипятят, концентрация высокая, и это и есть соевый соус. What a long process, but still Koreans actually go through with it. Это то, что мы сейчас делаем. We make this sauce as we did in the old days. Somewhere there is production where they do it differently. We do it this way. У нас пока это так делается. Actually, yeah, it actually smells pretty good. Can you eat it? Лепешка. What's it called? Это, ну, колобки, это, ну, меди. Меди. Ага, меди. Cool. You know, it's crazy because soy sauce is something that's used all around the world now. I use soy sauce in my own cooking, but I would never, ever, ever would have imagined that it came from these little, uh, these little patties drying out here in the mm -hmm. sun. Uh, it's quite a laborious process, but I would imagine to have this kind of homemade soy sauce is like really a treasure. up in the United States, I got very used to always trying different kinds of food. One day you can have Mexican food, the other day you can have Chinese food. And I think that's one of the reasons why I really like living in Kazakhstan, is that there are so many cultures here, so many cuisines. And so you can very easily actually find where I live in Almaty, Korean restaurants. And I often go out and I try Korean food, but there are some dishes that we've seen here in Ustobe that actually I've never seen in a Korean restaurant even. So I'm curious about this. What at the blue there? Now, now this dish, this soup, this is the first time I've ever seen this. In Korean, we call this soup tadakugi. We need the dough and we take little pieces. That's why we also call it javatike. Tear small pieces of dough. We cook it very often. <laughs> and then what kind of meat do they use? I think it's pork. And then we put everything that we have on the table. Everything is from our garden. And what do we have here? It's a lecho. Inside we have pepper, carrot and tomato juice. Ah. Mm -hmm. It's like the Russian dish, golubtsi. Golubtsi with vegetables. Okay. Is it spicy? Mm -hmm. We only eat spicy food. Well, I, lo I love spicy food. I would try it. But this is very good, actually. It's, I, it's, to me, it's very much this kind of comfort food. It's almost like a kind of noodle soup that we have back in America whenever we're sick. Very kind of soft noodles that go down easy with some tasty pork. 
and a nice kind of meaty broth there. I can imagine when it gets really cold out here in Oshitobe, in the middle of the Kazakh steppe, to have a bowl of this is uh, heaven. I love that soup that we had for lunch so much that I asked the chef Alona to show me how it's made. And it turns out it's actually quite simple. We're out here in their kind of summer kitchen here on the patio. They had this big, beautiful uh, kazan, this large kind of wok out here. It's filled with water where we've already put potatoes and onions and scallions. And check it out. So she has this big kind of round ball of dough and she's just pinching it off and throwing it in there. So this is kind of the easiest possible way to make pasta. You don't have to roll it out, you don't have to cut it, you just kind of pinch it out and throw it in. Maybe I'll see if I can actually... Mm -hmm. All right, so now I have my own ball. So I'll show you, just kind of pinch it off like that. It's quite sticky and stretchy, and we just throw it right in there. Now I like this actually, because it comes out being this very thick, chewy kind of dough that's fun to eat. Um, but it's, it's striking to hear, actually, that this is something that they really survived off of. Oops. So I want it to stick to the side. Because it's such a simple food, actually, just made from flour. But it's, uh, it's something that's quite filling. And all you need is some water and some of these noodles. And then you get this classic Korean soup. Do Koreans here ever dream about returning back to their ancestral homeland, or is Kazakhstan already your motherland? Kazakhstan is our motherland. Our kids live here. Even if we moved here when we were kids, but we live here already. We don't even imagine how they live in Korea. We don't understand. It's our homeland. We got used to this country. Yeah, I understand. It's become my motherland, too. She's got some lungs on her head. Красиво голос у вас. Сильный крепкий. Пою. Вот правда деревня, но пою. Я сценически работаю. So they were saying that actually this is a song that's specifically for harvesting rice. So imagine they're out in the fields, they're planting the rice. They need something to kind of distract themselves with. So they sing these songs, and you can feel right this kind of. So but before they used a tractor, and now they do it. They used to all do it by hands, and you can feel that kind of solidarity as they're singing this together. What a beautiful song. Спасибо. This song Arirong has become so popular from Korea to Ustobe all the way here to Donny Vastok. Um, everywhere you hear it, it has this powerful passion. It's something that I think brings the Korean people together. And it's brought all of us here together today. And we've, we're glad that you joined us too on this Korean adventure of ours. Thank you for joining us on Discovering Kazakhstan. Until next time, Sao Bol, Baka, and goodbye.